The New York Philharmonic is showcasing four pivotal works of Luciano Berrio in 2008. Symphonia, the orchestral masterpiece featuring an octet of solo singers, the 14 sequenzas, each written for a different solo instrument, the folk songs, as arranged for solo voice and orchestra, and rendering, his orchestral synthesis of a three-movement work based on fragments and sketches by Schubert. Symphonia is now a frequently played work in the contemporary repertory. Since giving the world premiere, the New York Philharmonic has reprised it several times, as it does again this winter. Berio's title refers to the literal root sense of the word symphony, a simultaneous sounding together of a variety of voices. And not only musical voices, Berio interweaves spoken and sometimes shouted texts from literature and from the raging street protests of the tumultuous year of its origin, 1968. The second movement is a haunting lamentation for the recently murdered Martin Luther King Jr. The most famous passage in Symphonia occurs in its longest central movement. Using the scherzo from Mahler's Resurrection Symphony No. 2 as a skeleton, Berio deftly fleshes it out with a prodigal variety of musical citations from Bach to Stockhausen. Why Mahler? As Berio notes, his work seems to carry all the weight of the last two centuries of musical history. Meanwhile, a parallel track made of fragments from Samuel Beckett's novel, The Unnameable, is recited. Berio objected to the frequent description of his process here as a collage, since the term suggested to him a helter-skelter throwing together of recycled elements. In fact, the real brilliance of this part of Symphonia lies in the complex network of associations Berio deliberately develops by threading together so many sources. For more than 40 years, Berio intermittently worked on a series of pieces for solo instruments, including one for human voice, known as the sequenzas. These pieces are relatively short in themselves, but they amount to a vast encyclopedia of musical exploration that belies their relative length. The Day of Berio on February 2nd will present all 14 sequences as interpreted by New York Philharmonic musicians and guests. It uses all of the modern devices. Uh, it's, got, it's, got, uh, it's got some flutter tongue. It has a, it has a little bit of harmonics uh, for, a sing for an instrument that can only play one note at a time, which creates a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and uh, modern devices like that but uh, they're, they're worked into the piece so well that the piece really has mood, has shape, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's a piece that one can, can really sink one's teeth into. The sequences reconsider the idea of virtuosity by bringing the actual physical properties of each instrument into the equation, along with its rich history of performance styles. Most importantly, Berio sets up the sequences as a kind of performance art, where the soloists exploit their inherent theatricality. frequently performed creations is his arrangement of folk songs to be interpreted in March by soprano Don Upshaw. <laughs> Berio's project here isn't about transcribing for orchestra and voice original folk songs in an authentic manner. In fact, Berio himself wrote the tunes for two songs in the collection. As he put it, I am interested in taking possession of that treasure with my own means. I return again and again to folk music because I try to establish contact between that and my own ideas about music. In his later years, Berio became particularly interested in what might be described as a kind of intervention or recomposition through transcription. 
Berio created new arrangements of familiar works like the Brahms Clarinet Sonata in F minor for Philharmonic clarinetist Stanley Drucker, as well as a completion of Puccini's Turandot. Among Berio's numerous voyages into the past, one of the most intriguing involves his elaboration of the sketches of Schubert's Tenth Symphony, what Berio called his rendering, which the New York Philharmonic will perform in May. Instead of trying to stitch together the existing fragments in the style of Schubert, Berio discreetly interweaves these fragments with other citations from Schubert and with the dreamy sound of the celesta to point up rather than to disguise his role as a restorer.